So friends, today we are going to discuss a new numerical problem in this series of tutorial of shear force and bending moment diagram. This is the lecture number, I, I think it is fifth, lecture number 15 and we have to draw the shear force and the bending moment diagram for this problem. So first step is always to determine the reactions at the point A. Suppose reactions at the point A is RA and the reaction at the point B is RB. Okay. And the point at the point A, there is a concentrated movement acting of this magnitude, and at the point B, there is a concentrated movement acting of this magnitude. And this is the UDL having the intensity 7 kN per meter, and there is a point load acting at this point C. We have to draw the shear force at the bending moment diagram. So, first equation is always to equate RA plus RB is equal to net vertical load. So, the net vertical load is equal to is equal to 122 because of this and because of this UDL is equal to intensity of the U this UDL 7 into this distance 11 which will give us 199 kN and the next step is the summation of all the movement about this point A which is acting as a hinge is equal to zero. Now friend summation of all the movement about the point A is equal to zero. Now RB is causing a anti-clockwise rotation of this beam AB about the point A. So RB, the magnitude of this force into this distance, 11 plus 5 plus 5 will give us 21. So this will give us anti-clockwise movement of this magnitude, RB, about the point A. And this movement of 280 kN is trying to rotate this beam AB in clockwise direction about the point A. So clockwise here is taken as negative. See here how it is rotating. This is the movement of 280 acting at the point B and about the point A, it is rotating this beam AB in anti-clockwise direction like this. Okay. Now, this moment of this UDL having in, having intensity 7 will have a load of 7 into this length which is 11 which will give us 77 and it will act at a distance of how much? At a distance of this 5.5 that is in middle. Okay. So, it will create a moment of magnitude, the magnitude 77, 77 will act like this kilonewton into this distance 5 plus 5 plus 5.5 that is 15.5 and it will also rotate the beam A beam element this and this beam element in and uh, clockwise direction about the point A. So it, the clockwise taken here as negative. negative. Again because of this load there will be a clockwise rotation of magnitude this, that is 122 into this distance and plus 415 because of this there will be a positive anti-clockwise rotation how this is rotating let us see this suppose this is the point a and this suppose is the small beam element near the point a now this movement is acting 415 movement is acting over here like this okay like this okay so rubbing this portion you can see this this movement is trying to rotate this beam element like this in clockwise direction okay the small beam element sorry anti-clockwise direction okay this is trying to rotate this beam in anti-clockwise direction so we are taken as positive so when we substitute all these things we will find that the value of rb will come out to be how much it is coming out to be 79.42 and using this equation the ra will come out to be 119.58 kilonewton okay now friends, we will calculate the shear force at the various points A, C, D and B. Because there is a point load acting at the point A, C and B in the form of reactions, the point load acting at point B and A and there is a point load of 122 kN is acting at the point C. That's why we have to calculate the bending or shear force in the left side of the point A and on the right side of the point A. On the left side of the point C and on the right side of the point C on the left side of the point B and on the right side of the point B because shear force will change suddenly because of this point load acting and we have to calculate shear force at the point D directly because it, there is no point load acting at the point D. Now we will calculate shear force on the left side of the point A. For that we know that beam terminates on the left side of the point A that's why shear force will be zero on the left side of the point A. Now shear force on the right side of the point A we will calculate. For that we have to construct a section very near to this point A on the right side of the point A. This is the section XX suppose constructed here. Now on the left side of this section you can see that this force is contributing toward the shear force of magnitude RA. Okay this RA and RA is equal to 
119.58 and it will have a plus sign using this sign convention okay we will write here the value of r is 119.58 and rv is equal to how much 79.42 okay now see a force at the on the left side of the point c we want to calculate then we have to construct a section on the left side of the point c suppose this is a section constructed here on the left side of this point c okay now looking on the left side of this section you can see that only this force is contributing towards the shear force about this section xx and it will contribute towards a positive shear force of magnitude 119.58 and it have positive sign according to this sign convention okay now shear force on the right side of the point c we will calculate okay so on the right side of the point c if you want to calculate the shear force then we have to construct again a section here on the right side of the point c and this is the section constructed here on the right side of the point c now looking on the left side of this section this force is contributing toward a positive shear force of magnitude 119.58 119.58 and this force is contributing toward a negative shear force of magnitude 122 kN using this sign convention okay so it will give us the value of the shear force on the right side of the point c is as minus 2.4 2 kilo newton okay and shear force at the point d if you want to calculate then you have to construct a section at the point d okay and look on the left side of the section then you can find that the shear force at the point d will also come out to be this calculation will repeat itself and it will come out to be minus 4.2.42 okay and shear force on the left side of the point b if you want to calculate then you have to construct a section here on the left side of the point b okay now looking either on the left side of this section or on the right side you can look earlier we have looked on the left side whenever we considered a section xx now we will look on the right side because it will make calculation easier so on the right side of this section xx you can see that this load rb this reaction rb is contributing toward a negative shear force using this sign convention okay because it is acting on the left side of this section xx similar to this sign convention so it will create a shear force of magnitude minus rb and it will give us minus 79.42 shear force and shear force on the right side of the point b will be zero because the beam terminates on the right side of the point b so now we will draw the shear force diagram now friends we will draw the shear force diagram these lines are constructed passing through the point a okay dotted lines are this line is from b and this is from c and this is from this is from d and this is from b okay so mark here as the point a this is the point c this is the point d and this is the point b now friends on the left side of the point a shear force is zero so making a cross here at the point a near to the left side of the point a and on the right side of the point a the shear force is going to 119.58 so 119.58 will lie somewhere here 119.58 okay and shear force on the left side of the point c is going to 119.58 so marking cross in the same level of 119 119.58 here and shear force on the right side of the point c is going to minus 2.42 so it is decreasing to somewhere here suppose minus 2.42 is a very small value so i am uh, rubbing this c and writing here minus 2.42 will lie somewhere here below the point c and shear force at the point d is 2.42 so it will lie also in the same level i am shifting this point d above so it will lie in same level minus 2.42 and shear force uh, on the left side of the point b is minus 79.42 okay so making a cross at the at a distance of suppose minus 79.42 up to a scale below the point b and at the point b on the right side the shear force is zero so making a cross here so joining first point with the second point with a vertical line because there is a point load acting at the point a and joining second point with the third point with a horizontal line because there is no load acting between the point a and c and joining third point with the fourth point with a vertical line because there is a point load acting at the point c and joining the fourth point with the fifth point with a straight line because there is no load acting between the point c and d and joining this point the next point next two points with an inclined line why because there is udl acting between point d and b that's why inclined line between point d and b and joining this again with a straight vertical horizontal vertical line because there is a point load acting at the point b so this will give us the bending movement diagram 
clearly this area is positive because all the things lying above this line are treated as positive and all the thing, other things which are lying below this line AB are treated as negative. Now friends, we will do the bending moment calculation. Okay, that's the bending moment you have to find out at on the left side of the point A and on the right side of the point A. Why? Because there is a concentrated moment acting at the point A. So the bending moment will change suddenly when going from the left side of the point A to the right side of the point A. And similar is true for the point B also. That's why we are finding bending moment on the left side of the point B and bending moment on the right side of the point B. And bending moment at C and D can be find out directly constructing a section at the point C and D because there is no concentrated moment acting at the point C and D. So bending moment on the left side of the point A will be zero because the beam terminates on the left side of the point A and bending moment on the right side of the point A if you want to cal calculate then we have to construct the section here passing on the passing through the left side of the point A. Now because of this concentrated movement there will be a movement of magnitude minus 415 kilonewton meter. Negative sign is taken because of this sign convention. Why? Because if this is the section xx and there is a concentrated movement acting on the left side of this section and going in anti-clockwise direction then it is treated as negative and similar is true for this case here the section xx is here and on the left side of the section xx there is a concentrated movement acting and going anti-clockwise direction so taken as negative now bending movement at the point c we will calculate so bending movement at the point c now we will calculate so construct a section directly passing through the point c okay now because of this concentrated movement there will be a movement of magnitude minus 415 using this sign convention and because of this reaction there will be a movement of magnitude plus 119 the magnitude of this reaction 5 8 into the distance which is 5 it is taken as positive because it is creating a sagging bending movement okay sagging is treated as positive so this will give us 182.9 kilonewton meter now bending moment at D we will calculate. So the bending moment at D can be calculated by constructing a section at the point D and looking on the left side of that section, this is the section constructed passing through the point D and looking on the left side of this section because of this concentrated movement there will be a movement of minus 415 using this sign convention and because of this reaction there will be a movement of plus 119.58 into the distance 5 plus 5 is equal to 10 and because of this uh, point low there will be a bending movement of magnitude minus 122 that is the magnitude of this point load into this distance 5 okay so it is treated as uh, going as negative it is treated as negative because it is creating a hogging bending movement or the section xx okay now friends uh, let us find out calculate it so i have already calculated it and it is giving me 170.8 newton meter now on the left side of the B point we want to calculate the bending movement then construct a section passing through the left side of the point B in, in immediate left side of the point B then you can see that on the right now you can look on the left side of this section to calculate the bending movement but it will create a lot of calculations so I am looking on the right side of this section so on the right side of this section you can see that this concentrated movement is causing a movement of magnitude how much uh, it is creating a magnitude of minus 280 using this sign convention why because suppose this is the movement acting on the left side of the section xx and is going in clockwise direction similar is the case here in our sign convention if this is the section xx and there is a movement going in uh, clockwise direction and lying on the rhs of this section is treated as negative so similar is the case here so it is treating as negative if this is our section xx and this is the movement lying in RHS of this section and going in clockwise direction like this so it is treated as negative and bending moment on the right side of the point B is zero because the beam terminates on the right side of the point B so now we will draw the bending moment diagram now friends these lines are projected these points are projected over another now friends these project points are projected here over this another line okay the point B A B C and D and we know that bending moment on the left side of the point A is zero so making a cross here at the point A and uh, bending moment on the right side of the point A is going to minus 415 so minus 415 suppose lies somewhere here below the point A minus 415 okay and uh, bending moment at the point C is taken as 182.9 so bending moment at the point C suppose lying here 182 182.9 suppose lies somewhere here and the bending moment uh, 
at the point D is suppose 170 so 170 this lies somewhere here 170.8 and pending movement of the left side of the point B is uh, minus uh, 280 so minus 280 suppose lies somewhere here minus 280 and pending movement B on the right side of the point B is 0 so we can cross here now joining first point with the second with a straight vertical line because it is a concentrated movement acting at the point A and second point is joined with the third point with an inclined line because the shear force diagram is a horizontal line between the point A and C and the second third point is joined with the fourth point with an inclined line and fourth point with uh, one two three four fifth point is joined uh, fourth point is joined with the fifth point with a parabolic line like this which is going like this parabola is going like this okay and uh, this parabola is uh, going like this okay because there is a uh, UDL line between the point D and B and the next two point are joined with a horizontal line vertical line because it has concentrated movement like lying at the point B now friends why we are drawing uh, one important concept that I am telling you nobody will tell you why we are uh, drawing this parabola with concavity of why can't we draw the parabola like this uh, that concavity downward like this uh, I will tell you re the reason okay so we are drawing the parabola like this because we know that between the point D and B the shear force is the increasing in negative direction that is it is evident from the graph it is increasing from minus 2.42 to minus 79.42 its magnitude is increasing mm, okay so the the slope of the bending movement diagram will also increase from the point D to B because we know that the slope shear force is given as d d uh, d dm by dx that is the slope of the bending movement diagram will give us the shear force so as the shear force will increase then the bending movement diagram slope will also increase so the shear force is increasing between the point d and b so the bending movement diagram slope will also increase from the point d to b so suppose here you can see that we have drawn this parabola like this with concavity of because if you consider a small element like this dx we are moving a small distance dx then there will be a change in the bending movement dm like this if this is a dx then there will be a change in bending movement which is denoted by dm okay if this is dx a small dx now similarly with the same length of dx if you draw here dx having the same length like this then you can see that the dm will increase if this is the dx suppose having the same length then the dm is increasing with the when we go from point a uh, when we going from point this point to this that is going from point d toward the point b so the slope is increasing that is dm by dx is increasing okay and because the sh shear force is increasing between the point d to b so the slope of the bending moment diagram must also increase from d to b that's why we are taking this parabola that is concavity up not concavity down so this was all for today's topic friend if you like my video you can subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the notification of upcoming videos